it's me, isn't it, that does the quiz? <laughs> okay. All right. Let me buy myself a bit more time and get mentally prepared for this. Um, what possessed you? What, 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 what inspired you to come up with a Portugal Cafe quiz? Uh, it was really a sort of adaptation and um, expansion on a series of blog posts that I wrote some time ago. A se four blog posts uh, called, uh, let me just get this, <laughs> called um, the Portuguese Handbook, Portuguese Cafes, the Secret Handbook, a series of four blog posts on Portuguese cafes and what you can expect. These are your them. blogs. So this, yes, I'll share the, oh, the links as well. Great, great. <clears throat> so this is kind of an expansion on that. And at the same time, uh, you know, adding some things that I did not add there because they don't really work in writing. So I thought it would be fun. Yes. Uh, you need a YouTube channel, don't you? Everyone, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... Everyone's telling me that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the things that just won't work uh, in print. Right. OK. Yeah. Before we move on to this, and I'm not I'm not just trying to, you know, uh, avoid the issue uh, that I'm going <laughs> to about to be quizzed here. Um, Owen has sent us a message about olive oil. So let's just have a quick listen to that before we move on and into the Portuguese cafe environment. Good morning, Carl. Quick tip for you here. Virgin, extra virgin olive oil for dressing. Your regular olive oil for cooking, for frying. It's all down to the taste. Enjoy. Good man. Thank you very much, Owen. So extra virgin to eat cold, as it were, to room temperature and virgin for the cooking. And as for everything else, forget about it. I mean, all those horrible oils that we discover are really bad for us. Give them a while. The rapeseed oils, a lot of the veg oils, not so great. Um, sunflowers, w w I think, is better among those other oils. But if, you, if you're in Portugal, why would you have anything other than olive oil or maybe hemp oil or sesame oil for those special occasions? So, yeah, buy oil well and thank you for that. Owen, all right, I think I'm ready now. <laughs> can we have just a bit of a drum roll, please? Of course we can. You know we can. Right, uh, let's find the drum roll. Uh, dust, dust off the drum roll. And uh, I say that and um, I've forgotten how to do it. Here we go. It's been so long. Uh -huh. I think two days, in fact. Okay, now we do have um, <laughs> we do have a drum roll. Here it is. Okay, question number one. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so which one of these statements is true about cafes in Portugal? A. Portuguese cafes are few and far between. B. <laughs> Portuguese cafes are simply <laughs> places to stop by for a quick coffee and a snack. C. Portuguese cafes serve coffee-based drinks and snacks, but are also a mix of safe haven, meeting spots, and information hub. Well, I was nearly going to go. For, yeah, I was nearly going to go <laughs> for B until you said C, and I'm going to go for C. The um, the all important yes, yeah. networking and social role of the Portuguese cafe. Yes, which is a kind of a. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> Thank you, thank you. A kind of um, an evolution of, um, you know, f f uh, on the fact that we used to have, like so many places in Europe, we used to have like the, the town plaza, the village square where people would meet. And then mm. as things change, um, cafes actually um, took on that role very much. Not exclusively, but very much, especially after the 70s. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it, it's quite a surprise to foreigners, isn't it, to find out how easygoing the cafe is and what a social space it is. Because yeah. if you're from the United States, you tend to get moved on quite quickly. Um, yeah. unless, you, unless you're tipping people and buying, the, <laughs> you know, renting some a space in the cafe or restaurant for a little while. So it's, it's got the similarly, you know, the case in, in the United Kingdom as well. But here in Portugal, you know, you, you people, the cafe owners seem to accept that they are hosting a social space as well. And people sometimes will pop in and sit down and not buy anything. But at some point they will, won't they? And it is. Yeah, a, it is, yeah right. OK. And then you'll see people just having a coffee and reading the newspapers, doing crosswords, that sort of thing, watching TV. Yeah. It's kind of a second home for a lot of people. Right. And isn't that a lovely thing? That's a wonderful yeah, thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it really it's a, is. It's a space for people who can just be without a lot of pressure to consume something. 
it's assumed you will at least buy something like at least one coffee but this in the vast majority of spaces it's not like anyone's going to pressure you to leave because you're not buying anything so <laughs> you're gonna come and stand behind you yeah 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 come on <laughs> yeah I, I, what i've noticed which is which is i think is, is fine is um i asked for the wi-fi code somewhere recently and it was something like you know um buy some food please was the, <laughs> was, was, was the wi-fi code. That's, that's that's fair enough isn't it um yeah. to, you know when you get to that, <laughs> to, to that and point. some places don't have wi-fi either so that's even, even better you might say yeah. Even better. yeah so could you just remind us the answer well the question and the answer one more time please. yes so the question uh which one of these statements is true about cafes in portugal and the, the right answer was Portuguese cafes serve coffee-based drinks and snacks, but are also a mix of safe haven, meeting spots, and information hub. Not necessarily gossip, but information. That's that's a difference. But let's face <laughs> it, it's going to happen sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's room for that. There's room for that. But... <laughs> and the other the other thing, I, Saturday morning, I, when if I go to the market in San Martino de Porto, there's a lovely lovely cafe which is full of local people, um, and I would like to include myself in that a description. And um, often I, there'll be a, a, an old lady in there, an older lady, an elder, an elderette um, sat there and she'll beckon me to join her because you know, it's, it's quite busy. So I'll be, I'll be beckoned to join um, a, a lady. And I, on one occasion I did this and I'm sat with her and we start talking. I mean, we've got a nice mixture of Portuguese and English going on. And it's, it's always fascinating, always interesting. And I'm saying, yeah, do you want another coffee? And then in walks the... Um, the, the sort of like the deputy president, the number two in command mm. in San Martino. And she starts calling him these words that uh, I'm thinking that would be, I, you'd normally hear that on a football pitch or in a football <laughs> ground. I'm thinking, did she just, did she just call him that? And she was giving, she was giving the local politician a, like, quite in a friendly way, but she was really quite rude to him. Sort of, you know, bringing him down a peg or two. Because she was an elder and he's a young, quite a young guy, and he was taking it. So it's a place for that as well, isn't it? That social interaction and a bit of accountability, it would seem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't sound surprised. And the you don't fact that he goes to. That. No. <laughs> right. Especially because of that age gap that you're mentioning. Yeah, okay. Uh, right. had, it ha had it been um, coming from someone younger, maybe he would not have accepted it uh, as well. Okay, interesting. But interesting. coming from someone who probably was old enough to be his mom or his grandmother. Hmm, his grandma, yeah. Yeah, and, and and of course, um, you know, there is that we we notice this as foreigners, the love of uh, children and young people from the elders. But the, mm -hmm. with that goes the right, you know, as well as the responsibility comes the right to give them a bollocking every now and then as yes. well. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, question number two. Question number two. Um, Portuguese cafes are famous for their latte art. A, true. B, false. You know, the kid from... <laughs> No way. <laughs> no, 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 no way. Now, sometimes yeah. I can tell if a, and you wouldn't even call him a barista here, would you? It's not, yeah. it's just all of that pretense. Forget it. If you, if you want that, I don't know, stay where you are because <laughs> it's not going to happen here. But it doesn't even happen in Italy, does it really? It's, a, it's an entirely. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's here you'll find, like, if you go to the cities, uh, you know, I'm sure you'll find places that have the cute foam yeah. and all of that. But, yeah. The vast majority of places and the, ma the vast majority of people drinking coffee, we just expect our coffee to you know, slap a silly in the face. And that's it. So we don't care about the foam. Sorry. But... Slap a silly in the face. Is that a Portuguese expression? Slap a silly yeah, in the face. Yes, slap you silly. Yeah, slap one. Slap, slap you in the face, slap someone silly. Yeah. Okay, very right? good. So. Right. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, and I, and I, I notice if someone's been uh, traveling abroad, you know, if they've gone abroad to work and they come back and they're making coffee, they, they might take a little bit more care and bang mm. the milk a little bit and, you know, zhoosh the milk slightly. But generally speaking, we are free of that pretense and nonsense. We know how we want it. And that is not added value. That's in, in many ways an unnecessary distraction, isn't it, from the... The you know this is the, the, what I've heard about Portuguese coffee. It's not the best in the world, but it's the, it's the um, the most consistently good. Now that has got to be a good thing, um, and that's yeah. probably the coffee snob who said it. But you can expect it's a bit like you know a Big Mac is a Big Mac around the world. A Portuguese coffee is a Portuguese coffee generally wherever you go in the country, right? So of a particular standard, and I love that. 
So none of your fancy latte foams. Thank you very much. I think I've got two out of two so far. Yeah, yeah, good. So number three. Uh, which one of these does not belong in a Portuguese cafe? A, beer. B, a couple of shelves with gum and chocolate candy bars. C, pumpkin spice syrup. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> <laughs> pumpkin spice syrup. And what I want to do with the pumpkin spice syrup is a Zay Pavino to that. <laughs> Take that with you and go. Uh, and, 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 and going back to que the part, second part of the question, the gum, the candy. Yeah. And There's the always a shelf. Of, yes, there? yes, yes, yes. And, and the, the, the little thing. games. Yeah, the rush Padinas, but also... Um, there'll be a look. There'll be a, a when we first came, the kids saw this. Um, what is it? I, I don't know. Um, a A2, A1 sized piece of cardboard with various chocolate bars mm. and, num and numbers on them. And there, there's a game where you can put like mm. a cocktail stick into a board of um covered over holes and it pushes a ball through. And if you get a ball of a certain color, you get to choose a bar of chocolate, or yes. depending on the color of the ball, you get a different bar of chocolate. And a little plastic ball with a number in, and it's like um, what's what's that a tombola sort of game, isn't it as well? Not saying that as much anymore. Yeah, no, that's that was created by Regina, the Portuguese chocolate company Regina, some years ago. It oh. was actually something based on something that used to exist, like when my parents were uh, kids, okay. and little gross small like the, the local grocery stores used to have something that was basically like that and yeah. the kids would uh you know gather whatever <laughs> spare money they could to go and get a chocolate because you always got chocolate you always, always. win don't you you yeah. always win that's the, that's yeah. a lovely yeah. another fair thing i mean the, uh, even the grabber machine in portugal <laughs> there's one mm. in Caldesterenia. well yeah the modern ones no um yeah, but no, there's, no, there's, no. One in, there's one in Caldesterenia in the La Vie shopping center where it keeps going until you get something it's not you're, you're oh. not against you're not against the clock. The the, the the and the first time we we went, the return um, box was had like three euros in it, because foreigners come along, and they think that they, they they've got a time and they walk away and eventually it gives you your money back if you haven't won anything. It's just so beautiful. It's so. If my fair. kid knows about that. I'm screwed. I'm not. Gonna, <laughs> you know, could be there all day. We, yes. And we have. <laughs> Let's keep that quiet. <laughs> three out of three for me this morning. I'm doing pretty well. Is this going to get more difficult? I'm, I'm guessing you are going maybe. To get... Yeah, maybe the last one. I'm saving the best for last. But so okay, all right. And how's okay. everyone doing at home? Let us know. Um, 100 percent for me so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so number four. What is a cafe con cheirinho? A, an espresso with a shot of whiskey on the side. B, an espresso topped off with aguardiente. Or C, an espresso served with powdered cinnamon. This one's easy. I, I'm feeling quite um, cocky now. I'm going to go with that one. <laughs> I'm going to answer yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Four out of yeah. four. Yes. Yeah, yes. And welcome back, Michael and Catherine, to VRSA, who might, will recommend to them that they go and have a Café Con Cherinho to celebrate. <laughs> Cherinho meaning what exactly, uh, Catherine? Cherinho comes from the word cheiro, uh, meaning little smell, like a, a whiff. A little sniff, a little whiff of, of yeah, uh, yeah. aguardiente. So you have the, uh, yeah, you have a coffee and just top it off with a bit of aguardiente. Although yeah. I do have to say that the, the first option was based on something real. Uh, some time ago, I came across someone who was, she was not Portuguese. I'm not sure if she was from the US, I think she was. And she had been to Lisbon, to that, you know, that area called Parque das Nações? Yes. Where, yeah. And she had been to a restaurant there, and she had some heard someone mention mentioned it to her the the cafe conchirinho, and she wanted to give it a try. But the waiter, I'm guessing, was not Portuguese, and he had no clue what it was. And so she explained it the best she could, and then he was still clueless. So he brought her an espresso with a shot of whiskey on the side. Is that really <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm not. I don't like to encourage complaints book culture. <laughs> but if that was me, I'd be asking for the complaints book. That is a that is an affront to Portuguese culture and should be stamped yeah. out very quickly. I yeah. would say. Yeah. Well, he didn't know. I'm guessing he wasn't Portuguese. Yeah. Yeah. How very dare you, sir, do that? Um, I'm, I'm <laughs> quite offended. I'm not even Portuguese. Um, Veronica, and in some it, places, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, it's just Veronica. Not just Veronica. I, I just I just want to get this comment in from the wonderful Veronica. Uh, good morning. Hello, Michael. I'm also in VRSA. Are you enjoying the fair, which must be going on? 
um, at the moment in Inverarsi. Sorry, no, sorry, I interrupted you, Katya. No, no, I was just going to say that um, depending on the, the offer of the uh, restaurant or cafe where you're having your cafe con cheirinho, you may also want to have it with uh, another option besides aguardente, like um, a benda amarga, for example, you know, the bitter almond liquor. Okay, yeah. Uh, yes. Or... Um, Jerapiga, possibly? Yeah, uh, bagasse. Bagasse, is that... Yeah. What, what is bagasse? Is that a type of jerapiga or different? No, it's it's the kind of stuff that actually makes you grow hair on your chest. You know, oh, it's I like don't need any more of that. Okay. <laughs> Can you grow hair on my head? I mean, uh... <laughs> What's a try? No, if, if we if we spread a rumor that it grows hair on your head, we should buy shares in that company before we do so. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, so these are very interesting. Are they, uh, for the uh, next Good Morning Portugal Wine Club, I have been charged with the task of trying some Jerapiga. Um, so yeah. that'll be the first it's Monday. It's the time for it now. Yeah, it, that's right. That's right. It's, it's yeah, kind of around some, around um, the Saint Martin's. Um, yes. Festival. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So for the first Monday in November, which will tie in nicely with our uh, Discovery Weekend in San Martino de Porto, uh, if we have a San Martino or Varal de San Martino, and we've got the chestnuts and we've got the Jerapiga, we will be truly authentic. I think on that occasion. Oh. Trying that then, first Monday in November, 8 o'clock. Join us for that. I'm four out of four. They're all very quiet. Uh, I think, I wonder if anyone's got 100% like me. Let's see how we get on with question five. Question five. Aha, what is a tosta mística? Mística, okay? A. Oh, trick old... question. Trick yeah, question. yeah, 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 yeah. An old recipe for ceremonial bread that used to be made by Lusitanian shamans. B a toast that is <laughs> <laughs> B a toast that is made on a specific religious holiday, or C a common and much beloved pun on the phrase toste <clears throat> it's, it's, it's C, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah okay. It's a pun. Yeah. I, I, could, I could have gone with B on that. You know, like... I, I, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I know. Yeah, like, so bring me the, the Tosh um, yeah. like, Today, the day day for Tosh right? So. That's right. It's like, um, would you like the extra Reiki blessing on that? Uh, yeah, okay. That would be the Tosh uh for you. Okay. Five out of five, 100% so far. Are we halfway through? Is, that, is it? Yes, 10 yes. Right, okay. 10 questions, yeah. Feel, still feeling very good. I might even celebrate um, with a Tosh de Mistica later on today. Yeah. Very good, that, very that's, good. A good, that's a good phrase to use next time you go to a Portuguese cafe. And if you say, quero uma Tosh de Mistica, it, it, it follows like a, with a, you know, <laughs> with a kind of... <laughs> right? I'm gonna, it's I'm a sort of... <laughs> Do you know I'm going to try it? You, I, 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 at my local but cafe. It, they, yeah, they but it only what... shows that you're feeling more at ease with, uh, you know, with the with the Portuguese language because otherwise you wouldn't get the pun. Well, I love the fact that I mean, not all languages or cultures enjoy a pun, and and, and it's a matter of oh, we love it. Well, isn't that great that uh, like a British guy who loves a pun can carry on with that? And yeah, and I might finish with an obrigadinho, obrigadissimo, and go into the whole medley of obrigado of variations just to play with those words. I have noticed that, and I'm so glad for it. I don't know if the Chinese do the same or the Spanish even do the same with the wordplay. I'm so delighted to hear that. Question number six, please. Question number six. Uh, what is the filling you're likely to find in 90% of Portuguese pastries? A, chocolate. B, egg cream. C, strawberry jam. Oh, egg cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one's uh, easy. Very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, probably an increasing number of chocolate as we're on this yeah. slippery slope as the culture changes. Imagine the chocolate to egg cream balance is changing over time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of it has to do with um, not, sometimes not chocolate, chocolate, but that chocolate hazelnut kind of mm. Nutella sort of thing. Yes. Well, they, they are a huge company, aren't they? Yeah. The Ferrera Rocher Nutella Company. Um, I mean, I think that's pretty evil stuff, isn't it? it has to be said. And that hasn't been made by Portuguese grandmas. That's been made in, in <laughs> industrial uh, strength yes. and volume. And they're trying to fill. They're trying to put that anywhere they can. They'll be using it as pointing in buildings if they if they can. But it's not very good in this climate, of course. The uh, chocolate <laughs> chocolate mortar. Yeah. But they they are trying to put that in all sorts of things, and yes. even in the sacred uh, bolas de Berlin, they're pop, popping the Nutella in there. Like, Give it a rest. Give it a rest. Question number seven. I've seen it. I've seen it here in Sintra as well in the Trafseiros. Yeah. They're like this uh, rectangular shaped um, 
traditional local uh, pastry that's yeah. usually filled with, you guessed it, egg yeah. cream and yeah. almonds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they now have a variety of that with, uh, with chocolate as well. Well, yeah, they must so. be very pleased with themselves for, for getting into that market. But please, Nutella, just you, you're making enough money. Calma, tranquilo. Okay, uh, <laughs> number, number seven, I think. Number seven, yeah. So um, a lot of Portuguese like to enjoy their espresso with another drink on the side. Which drink is it? A, water, often sparkling water. B, apple juice. C, beer. Well, you know this one. I do know. Uh, the... <laughs> yes. Hey, it is a, isn't it? And... Yeah, it is. Although. <laughs> God, yeah, that's why I was hesitated slightly, because there are many people in this community who like to have a beer on the side of it. <laughs> yeah, I know. And one of the, one of the best um, compliments I ever received from you is when I was out cycling and um, I ordered a coffee, um, a sparkling water, and I had a chamus on the side. I no, no, a I, it was a, it was a, it was a coming out. That's right. And you said you are a Portuguese dad now. It's like out on, <laughs> out on his bike having a coffee, a sparkling water, and the result coming out. And it was lovely big shrimps inside. It was a particularly good one. Um, and what else was I going to say about that? It was it was fascinating that um, you, that you brought. Oh yeah, it was about the. Um, why it is that people will ask you in it if you do say, you know, um, and they'll say Pedras, Castelo, and you're thinking, and it's like fresca, normal, like, fresca, natural, con limão, natural. Con gelo. Yes, yeah. yeah, like, oh my god, I just saw sparkling water. Why is it so complicated? <laughs> it's because the, um, the you know, the, the, the Portuguese palette is attuned to the differences in these different brands, isn't it? You know, the, the Pedras is a bit salty and minerally. And Castello is a little bit smoother and has a little bit more bite to it, it would appear. So it's imp it's an important question. Important question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So 100%. Seven out of yes. seven. Have a coffee with a sparkling water. Bit of a palate cleanse, isn't it, I suppose? Yeah, I suppose that's um, for some people. I knew someone like that. For some people, it's also a question of... Um, you know, you're having some something that's not really healthy, which is the coffee. So you kind of, um, kind of mix that with the uh, with the sparkling water, which is uh, here at least commonly used for any kind of stomach issues. Stomach so. issues. Okay, that's a really nice way of putting it. But yeah, <laughs> it, you know, well, originally mineral water was medicinal, wasn't it? Not unlike you know olive oil in the UK. The only the only time we had olive oil in the UK until about 30 years ago, was if you were ill or had an ear infection, uh, believe it or not. So it's, it's interesting, isn't it? And then these things become just, you know, mass marketed. And we forget. And Beral. Beral was, a, uh, I think, medicinal in its origins. Coca-Cola, the same. Yeah, very interesting. Um, we have uh, Gary Mills joining us. And thank you for that, Antonio, uh, the Tosh de Mishtika. Gary is joining us from a wet Wales. On a positive note, mince pies and Quality Street have arrived in the stores. Um, I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> Okay, but yeah, for those of you who like your mince pies, it's October and they're in the shops already for Christmas in, in Wales by the sound of it. Question eight. Can I continue my 100% run here? Let's see. Let's see. Question eight. Walking around in Portugal, it's very common to find streets that have at least two or three cafes. What is the reason behind this phenomenon? A. Portuguese people tend to forget when they had their last coffee. B. Each cafe <laughs> has its own vibe and caters to different types of clients. Or C. It has to do with a complicated scheme involving local gangs of gangs of old ladies and the coffee mafia. C. No, I mean B. <laughs> <laughs> but it could be C. It, it could be C. Yeah. And it could be A as well. It's like you know you're you're walking from one cafe to the to pass the next one. Like, have I had a coffee? Oh, yeah, yeah, five minutes ago in the last cafe. But this is a very interesting question, uh, Katia, because people will wonder why, won't they? Even in yeah, a small yeah, yeah. town, it's like, you know, sadly, we are losing cafes, I think, in Portugal. H however, where they're hanging on in there in a small town, it's like, hold on a minute, this, which cafe do I go to? They're all well stocked. The, the, the cabinets are full of pastries uh, and gum and chocolate and all the other things you've talked about this morning and the top shelf of, 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 of liquor. Um, how do yeah. you choose? Um, you know, they, they, they are for different, a different clientele, each one, aren't they? And, and a different yeah, yeah, yeah. niche of the community. How does a foreigner choose the right cafe in that uh, environment? 
you have to go to you have to go to each one and, and decide what you like. It's not just about uh, like the kind of uh, snacks, for example, the kind of food they have. It's also about the whole vibe of the place. Like, for example, is it do you have like uh, the staff there? Are they really talkative? And do you like that? Yes. Maybe you don't. Maybe you just like to sit there in your table and just uh, read your paper or whatever and have your coffee and then you leave. Uh, there are several things there that have to be um, oh, it's you know, taken into, into account. Yeah. <laughs> it's another blog post. What type of person are you? You can no, tell... no, it should be like one of those quizzes. Like you should yeah. uh, <laughs> choose, the, choose your cafe uh, based on this personality uh, quiz. I can see it in <laughs> Psychology's magazine. And actually, yes. we should we could fly people out to Portugal and give them a character assessment based on which cafe they naturally <laughs> choose. Now, some cafes, I, I, it, it reminds me what you're saying. It reminds me of certain cafes I've been to where the owner has been absolutely sour faced and there's no smile. There's no service. You want a coffee, you get your coffee, you pay for your coffee, drink your coffee and go. And that those cafes persist, don't they? Because there are some people who just want that no-nonsense, pal, pal, casio, casio approach to, to having a coffee, right? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. no noise, no TV, no music, nothing like that. It's like, you know, old-fashioned sort of religious cafe. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's funny because I, I've seen uh, in a cafe near where I live, um, I've seen it like two or three times um, that I've been there. There's a, a guy, a Chinese guy from the shop next door, and he's just so Portuguese, you know, in this, in this, in this little bit. He goes, he enters the cafe, he does this, he, he doesn't sit down, he stays at the counter, they serve him his coffee, he drinks it up, doesn't sit, drinks it up, pays. And then he leaves just like this. And I'm thinking, oh God, that is so <laughs> that yes. is so Portuguese person before entering the office at 9 a.m. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's it, it's it's you know, you have to choose your cafe wisely, don't you, based on all you've been saying. If you want the banter in the chat and a cafe yeah. owner who won't leave you alone um with you know with a bit of banter and, and a bit of polite conversation, you need to choose that place. And if you try that stuff in one of the quiet cafes where people are just getting refueled. You're going to find just you're going to find a stern response, I think, aren't you? Potentially, the yeah. Portuguese has joined us. Should we get him on for the last couple of questions? Yeah, yeah let's bring him on. <laughs> okay, nice big round of applause. Easy, good, easy, good. He's a hello. No. Hello. Hey, mate. hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Bom dia, bom dia, bom dia, bom dia, amigos. Bom dia. <laughs> How is it you start your videos, Portuguese, eh, when you're on there? Uh, you've got a special way of cranking up your, your YouTube videos, uh, your introduction. Uh, have you forgotten how you do it? Yeah, I've forgotten how to do it because I have a script. I shouldn't <laughs> say that really, should I? I, <laughs> uh, I, actually had, I actually had someone on one of my videos say, wow, it's amazing. You spoke you spoke for 10 minutes without a teleprompter. I'm like, look into my sunglasses. Can you see that white rectangle <laughs> that's always in my sunglasses? That's a script. <laughs> Old school yeah, I think I say, bom, bom dia, Portugang. My, my, my followers are the Portuguese gang. Yes, that's how you Goodbye. say it. And you, congratulations. Goodbye. Congratulations on your um, your elevated monetized status. Uh, please subscribe to the Well, Portu I'm not in it for the money, Carl. You know, we not always for the money. Not in it for the money. Everyone says that. But you won't be turning it down, will you? But it's I, I won't turn it down, and it will all be going to the charity of me. Very good. Me. <laughs> Hey, I'll tell you what, I got in trouble for muttering about the rugby last time, didn't I? Do you remember? I don't remember that, no. Yeah, I, I can uh, never remember. You know, all the trouble you get yourself into, how am I supposed to remember each particular incident? Yeah, no, no, no to, to be fair, I sometimes say this to my students. They'll say, oh, do you remember? And I'm like, yeah, I've kind of had 30 days of uh, lessons since then. So, yeah, I, don't, I, I, I get it. But um, <laughs> they, they beat uh, Fiji, didn't they? They did. So I, they so did. I stop muttering. The... They're, they're a serious... Uh, I don't even want to, you to say what you said. Yeah, let's not let's not go back there. Uh, let's just <laughs> you, if you'd like to put the record straight by congratulating. Thank you, Antonio. Congratulate uh, the Portuguese squad, perhaps on their excellent performance. All will be forgiven. <laughs> well, I am congratulating them, of course. And um, even though I don't particularly watch rugby, of course, Portugal are my team now. They are my team. <laughs> So, yeah. Listen to you, the blowing in the wind from like muttering, muttering and getting... Well, what it was, the, the context was the day before, 
that guy in Mexico had rocked up in the Mexican parliament with two aliens. Oh, and yes. I, and and I, I was trying to compare which one I thought seemed more outlandish, the idea of Portugal rugby team in the World Cup or two aliens in the Mexican <laughs> parliament. That's what I was muttering about. I can We're remember. instantly back there. We're instantly yeah. back there. The, the wounds have been opened up again. I remember now. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, we love your your insight. We love your videos. Uh, people are very happy for you here. Uh, I think that's directed uh, directly at you uh, from Squire Shires. Bon dia, amigo. He's part of Portugal. Oh, um, yeah. So, uh, you join us for the... Um, I don't know if you've heard any of this so far. You might have been teaching right up to the line here um, before joining us. But we are in a Portugal cafe, a virtual Portugal cafe, and it's Katia Lima's Portugal cafe quiz. I've got 100% so far. I think it's... Am I seven or eight out of eight at the moment, Katia? Uh, he's already caused some trouble. Eight. Yeah, he's already <laughs> caused some trouble, Katia. Look, he's held up a right. mug as though that were in some way a good thing. You, we don't drink coffee at home here in Portugal, do we? Yeah, we Are do. We? We you do. have well, the Delta machines, remember? Yeah, but oh. that the coffee machine. That must have caused when they were first coming in. People must there must have been a sort of sense of uh, you know unrest in the Portuguese people making coffee at home. <laughs> No, not really. No. no? Okay, well, I'm, no. I'm glad to hear that. You're forgiven, Portuguese. Forgive me. Question <laughs> nine, please. <laughs> Question nine. Um, okay, so many Portuguese cafes have TV sets. Every now and then, people gather in cafes to watch something specific on those TV sets. What is it? A, oh. sun Sunday Mass. B, <laughs> live broadcasts. <laughs> live Little broadcasts. House on the Prairie. <laughs> B live broadcasts from the stock exchange exchange or C football matches. That's why Carl's there. Carl's there for B every time. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was A, but okay. <laughs> You're there for A, right? Portuguese. <laughs> the Sunday mass. Exactly. Yeah. I do like the idea of going to, to the cafe for the mass. <laughs> but that is um it, it would it recently in the last week it may well have been the rugby that we were talking about because yeah. the atmosphere watching the rugby was incredible where I was, and I think all over Portugal. But yes, it's gonna be sport, isn't it? It's gonna generally speaking, oh. it's gonna be the football. And not everyone likes it, do they, Katia? I mean, among Portuguese people, is it just an accepted thing? We've got TVs in there. Or are there voices of dissent among the Portuguese people? You can't hear yourself thinking here. We're trying to have a cup of coffee and there's all that football going on. I think that most people don't really mind. No. Again, if you don't like it, if it's something, imagine if there's like a big match going on, if, if you want to have your coffee or something and you don't particularly like that kind of environment, Yes, I'm sure there's another cafe just around the corner. So, exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah. And, and, and some people do complain. I mean, have you? How have you found that Portuguese? Did you? Did you like the idea? You've got kids, of course. So have I. When you go into a cafe, it's quite good to have something they can stare at while you have a quiet coffee, isn't it? Um, I'm not a fan of. Yeah. Uh, I thought you yeah, might to, to, to be honest, but we we're always outside anyway because we always have our dogs with us. Okay. So um, it, it really has no no impact on us, yeah. Right. But generally speaking, when I go out for a coffee, I like it to be quiet. Apart I'm from you making the video, the I've seen Apart you from me, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen <laughs> yeah. you in a cafe, and some of the faces of the people in there when you went in and did that cafe one that was brilliant because you never quite know, do you, how people are going to react? And, and generally, people are very good about it, aren't they? Do you do well, you get? disclaimers and do you, do you get everyone to do a sign off and release form in your in the cafe i've had one guy get it sometimes you can see by people's faces and to be yeah. honest un unless it's incidental which i believe is legal in portugal um i won't film anyone without permission because i know that in yeah. portugal people don't like it and the only guy i had get really angry with me and he did get really angry and he kept shouting out respect respect at the top of his lungs and I kept saying to him, I'm not, why do you think I'm filming you? <laughs> I'm not interested in you at all, but you're kind of making me want to turn the camera. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, um, I, 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 I know, I, I didn't know, I didn't. But yeah. He, he was really, doubly really upsetting, angry. though. First of all, he's making a, like a, a freedom and privacy statement, and then you turn on him and say, "I'm not even interested in you, mate." It's like, well, where does where does he go with that? Where does he go with that? Well, my theory was, I mean, it was a market store. My theory was, you know, you know, we all know why you don't want to be on camera, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, yeah. I do know what you mean. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah, In case the G and R are watching my videos, looking for people who aren't paying tax. I wonder if they're you know. among your 1,000 subscribers. They could be, couldn't they? Well, anything's possible. Um, Although, can... to be fair, the demographic is quite clear in the analytics, isn't it? You must have seen that. I don't look at it too much, but yes. I mean, do you, do you, could you be able to discern if uh, the GNR are watching? Well, I guess, I guess you wouldn't. I guess you wouldn't. Know. It doesn't say what their job, their job is, does it? No, but if there are, are a lot welcome. of people, if there are a lot welcome. of people who look like they're under eighteen, it could be the GNR. Um, it's only it's only <laughs> up from there, Portuguese. One K subscribers, fantastic. Eleven hundred now. Thank you, guys. Oh, well thank done, you. well done. Thank uh, you for noticing. Turn your back for a moment, and it's like a virus. Um, okay, we um, we are nine out of nine. I would, by my reckoning, one out of one for the Portuguese are doing ever so well here. It's just going to be a really tricky <laughs> one as the last question. Well, uh, it's it's maybe, 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 maybe I'm you've ready. heard that one. If uh, in Carl, maybe. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So drum roll for the last question then. <laughs> Okay. What is the joke that cafe waiters must make at least once a month as per the secret rules of the Grand Lodge of Cafes? A. Your mother. B. That's what she said. C. Queria, já não quero. You never heard that one? It's got to be C. It's got to be C. It has to be C. It has to be C. If if you start speaking in Portuguese uh, in cafe sooner or later you're gonna hear this one. Queria já não quer. Okay, so queria is like uh, what we call um, in Portuguese condicional de cortesia. It's a conditional verb form, like would you like? Except mm -hmm. it's the same <laughs> verb form as um, the past tense. Like eu ontem queria. Yesterday I wanted a coffee. Today I don't want. Right? So that's why yeah. you say you're trying to be polite in Portuguese and say, queria um café, por favor. I'd like a coffee, please. And so the guy will say, queria, já não quero. So you want it, but now you don't want it. That's kind of a joke that they make like. <laughs> well, we can do that. We could even act it out, couldn't we? Um, should we do that as a as a <laughs> bit of role play here? Who's gonna be the cafe? Are you gonna be the the, the, the waitress here, Katya? For that, and yeah, get the, get the <laughs> he sat outside because he's with his dog. Are you happy with and your you're line? Portuguese, aren't you? Come on, so you need to practice a bit, absolutely. Uh, right? Are you happy? Say, with, what, are you happy what, 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 what do I say? His lines are, <laughs> cafe, fresh favor, aren't they? Yeah, um, cafe, um, cafe, um, cafe. Cafe. Um, no, you have to say, Korea, Korea. Yeah, that's that is, that is the trigger ah, for the joke. Okay, Korean cafe. okay. Uh, so um, action, uh, botar, uh. Queria café, por favor. Queria, já não quero. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> See? Very good. And everyone goes like... <laughs> yeah. Yes. Very uh -huh. good, good, good improv and reactions there, Portuguese. Huh? That was great. <laughs> really good. I think that, but we've got our yeah, short yeah. today. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a mix of... A, yeah. Yeah. It's a bit like the wash your car joke, in a way. Go on, what's the wash your car joke? You know, you're washing your car, and then the neighbor says, Hey, come and do mine next. Oh, and yeah. everyone goes, Oh, oh yeah. yeah, what's he like? Yeah. What's he like? Uh, yeah, okay. All uh, right. Um, I think I feel a bit, um, I got 10 out of 10, and I'm, I'm quite pleased on one level, but also I didn't get the uh, I, I, I kind of just but you could have got 11. Is that what you're going to say? You could have pushed <laughs> no, for 11. You could have understood the last question. Sound like one of my Hong Kong students' parents, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A little bit of a fair stereotype there, I think, um, this morning. Um, I, and I say that without having a, a, a Chinese mother myself. Um, so it's ve very good. I loved, I really enjoyed that. Thank you so much. Uh, 10 out of 10 for me. And, I, and I, I kind of got a bit lucky with the last one. Two out of two for Portuguese. And I think you'd have done pretty well too, um, Tony there. Thank you so much. Any other notes to give us uh, on Portuguese cafe life, Katia? And what about this blog? Where can we, where can we read more about what you're saying about uh, Cafe. Oh, I'm just sending you the links to the series of uh, Ooh, the those, Portuguese Cafe Secret Handbook. Yep. It's a series okay. of four blog posts. Coincidentally, yep. anyone can also buy me a virtual coffee. You'll and find so the links they there. Should. Yes. That's been right. So they <laughs> should. If you, if you found that educational, amusing, um, enlightening, please go over to the links that I'm posting up now and you'll be able to actually buy um, Katia a coffee.